Hello class, today we're going to go over some of the basic best practices of documenting artwork. Um, for those who have a lot of photographic experience, this will seem a little elementary, but one of my goals is to make this process accessible to people who are not very familiar with photography and cameras. In order to get started, I've set up a little mini exhibition here in my home studio. Um, you'll see a little table by Beach Boy Furniture with a sculpture by Jeff Prokash on it, a silkscreen print on the wall by Annie Kielman, a sculpture leaning on the wall by Mike Lopez, and two wall sculptures by Dan Merva. The camera I'll be using today is the Canon 7D. It's a DSLR camera that's really good for documenting art. A lot of artists I know use it. It's not top of the line, which means you can get it used. Um, it's probably not extremely cheap, but it's a good investment um, if you um, are going to be documenting a lot of your own work. Um, if you're watching this from SAIC, the uh, Media Center has these cameras. Um, some of the controls might be different if you're using a different camera, so you may want to refer to the user manual or do a quick Google search, but most of the functions I'm going to be doing today are probably accessible on any DSLR camera. Before taking any photos, let's set our camera up to take the right kind of file. So DSLRs shoot in JPEG and RAW files. JPEGs are for screen viewing um, and RAW files are for editing. And you can have your camera take both. So right now, I'm setting it to take a large, smooth JPEG, and then I'm also having it pick a raw file. The raw files are going to be helpful for editing later. To get into the philosophy about what makes good artwork documentation, we need to know a little bit about our camera, especially how it receives light. There are three ways. One, there's the f-stop. That's how much light comes into the camera via the size of an aperture. There's the shutter speed, which is how long the camera is open. And there's the ISO, which is how sensitive the sensor is. For the sake of documenting work, the shutter speed is the least important because your camera is probably on a tripod and if the art is standing still, um, then the shutter speed can be open as long as it needs to. If the f-stop is wide open, meaning more light is coming into the camera, that will mean a shorter shutter speed and vice versa. A lower ISO will also mean a longer shutter speed, which again is fine because your camera will be on a tripod. You'll want a lower ISO because higher ISOs have more grain in the resulting image and it's okay for our shutter speed to be long since it's on a tripod. So go ahead and shut, set your ISO to a fairly low setting. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. What we want to think about is our f-stop. The amount of light coming into the camera also determines how much in front of the camera is in focus. This will be helpful if we want to take overall shots where everything needs to be in focus or detail shots where we only want a little bit in focus. You can control the relationship between the f-stop and the shutter speed either on the manual setting or the automatic setting. The manual setting allows you to set both the f-stop and the shutter speed independently. This means your photos might be over or underexposed, and every time you change the f-stop, you will also have to change the shutter speed. The more you do this, you'll get the hang of it. You can also use the automatic setting. This allows you to change the f-stop and it chooses a shutter speed for you that's appropriate for the amount of light coming into the camera. The difficulty with this is that if you photograph a dark painting, it will try to overexpose it. And if you photograph a light painting, for instance, um, it will try to underexpose it. On a Canon 7D, AV is automatic and M is manual. If you are on the manual setting, here is how you change your shutter speed and here is how you change your f-stop. Push the ISO button to change your ISO. 
And you can also change the general exposure setting here. Since f-stop is the most important function for exposure for documenting artwork, let's talk a little bit more about it. F-stops have a counterintuitive numeric system. Smaller numbers like 1.4 to 2.8 correspond with larger apertures. Larger numbers like 11, 16, 18, 20, or 22 correspond with smaller apertures. The difference between choosing a larger or smaller aperture depends on how much you want in focus. A smaller aperture allows more to be in focus, while a larger aperture, a smaller number, allows less to be in focus. I wanted this overall shot to be entirely in focus, so I used f18, but I would use a more open f-stop if I wanted to shoot a detail shot. Here's an example. This detail shot of the Jeff Prokash sculpture is shot at f22, the smallest f-stop, and you can see the Mike Lopez sculpture in the background is really distracting, so I want it to be out of focus. So here's the same shot, but rather with f8, so that the sculpture in the background is out of focus and your attention is more on the sculpture on top of the table. I can push this idea even further, changing the f-stop to f4, and you can see the sculpture in the background is even more out of focus, and even some of the end of the table is out of focus as well, and your attention zeroes in more on the sculpture on top of the table. Let's use another real life example. This is from a show that we did here at Adler and Floyd where I'm shooting from and it's by Mike Lopez, uh, same sculptor as the sculpture in the background. Um, and for this show, he had a cart full of sculptures and knickknacks and little bits of ephemera and the audience was allowed to take the pieces out and move them around the room as much as they wanted. So the beginning of the opening looked like this and the end of the opening looked like this. So in both of those shots, I want to make sure that everything is in focus, especially this end of night shot where there's stuff all over the room and I want it to all be visible. But the show also had a lot of tiny details that I wanted to document um, with a very narrow focus. So the overall shots were shot at um, F18 and then this uh, detail shot was shot at the widest f-stop that my camera has, which is 2.8. So another thing to think about before we actually take our photos is lighting, um, which affects obviously how bright the image is, but it also affects the relative blueness or yellowness of our whites, uh, which is called white balance. There is a lot of really fancy lighting equipment that you can either buy or rent or get from your school, but I'm more interested in showing you something that you can do at home. These are the lights I use here at Adler and Floyd. You can see they're really big, so they cast a light over a large area. And they also have a diffuser on the face of them, which means the light doesn't create hard shadows. I just got these lights at Home Depot um, and they can be used in any lamp. Um, and if you see on here, there's a small number that says 5000 K. K um, refers to how blue or how yellow the light is. 5000 K is supposed to match daylight. So you can see it says natural daylight. We have to set what's called the white balance on our camera so that its version of white is on the same blue to yellow scale as our light bulbs. So under the menu you can find an option for white balance and you'll see similar K scales as we saw on the light bulb. There's also a custom option if you don't know what the, the color temperature of your um, your light bulb is and in this you take a picture of pure white. I taped a piece of paper to the wall because my walls are actually painted in off-white color. Then you'll go into your white balance settings, set it to custom and go to white balance and then you select that image of pure white and then from then on your camera knows that that is its scale for white. 
For SAIC students, there's a page on the student guide to um, remote learning and making for lighting for photos and videos in your own home. And I suggest uh, looking at it. It's a really great resource for lighting at home. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with a number of the settings on our camera, we're ready to take our photo. Even with all of the f-stop considerations that we discussed before, focusing in on your image can be difficult. Um, most DSLR cameras have an automatic and a manual um, focus uh, features. I find that autofocus isn't very trustworthy, especially when things are flat against the wall. It can have trouble reading them. I also don't trust my own eyesight in terms of focusing by eye, so here's a little trick. Again, the controls for this might be different on a different camera, but on a 7D, change the autofocus back to manual and then press the start stop button. This enters what's called live mode where you can look through the LCD screen instead of the viewfinder. There's buttons on the side for zooming in. So zoom in to 10 times and then adjust manually the focus on the lens. So then you know that the detail is totally in focus in your image. The last trick I'm going to show you addresses what's called camera shake. This is when your camera is set up on a tripod, but the act of actually pushing the shutter button wiggles the camera a little bit and causes your image to be blurred. Um, in order to help with this, you can put a two second timer on your camera so that it takes a picture two seconds after you hit the button. Here's how it's done on a 7D. Press the AF drive button and turn the wheel until you see a symbol that's a little timer with a two under it. Looks like this. So that about does it. Thank you so much for watching and email me if you have any questions. I'm going to follow this video up with a video on editing the photos you take um, for documenting work. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you.